Hi, I'm Elizabeth and this is The Bookish North. Today I'm here with my very first weekly reading wrap-up. I mean, I've done wrap-ups before, I just haven't called them weekly reading wrap-ups. But I'm watching a lot of channels that do these wrap-ups and I'm really enjoying watching those. So I'm cheaply stealing the idea and putting it on my own channel. Uh, also, I think I need some structure to this channel uh, at the moment because I'm in the midst of a huge project at work that has a deadline at the end of August, so I'm going to be busy for quite some time. I just need something to hold myself accountable to and this concept uh, is it for the time being. So since this is the first one, I'm going to just include all of the books I've read in June so far. So I'm going slightly longer back than a week, but I'm sure you'll forgive me for that. So the first book I wanted to talk about is Medieval Bodies by Jack Hartnell. I've talked about this several times already because I've hauled it and it was in a currently reading video. But now I have finished it and I really, really like this. This is a non-fiction book about, well, medieval history really, but it has the body as its anchor point. So that's where everything starts. And all the chapters are organized around a specific body part. So you have head, you have the senses, you have skin, hands, heart, stomach, genitals and feet. And from this starting point Hartnell sort of discusses various topics. You always get a part of uh, medical history, what were they thinking about the body, about this particular body part at the time, uh, the illnesses connected to that and the treatment thereof. And then you also get discussions of how the body was depicted in artworks and you get discussions about that, which I found really interesting. And the book is also illustrated with lots of beautiful uh, color illustrations. Uh, and I found that very helpful because I'm not really well versed in the art world, so having the artwork discussed, depicted in full colour in the book was very helpful. I did find this a compelling read. Uh, I think it was well structured and well written and uh, I think well, maybe if you are very well versed in medieval times you won't find much new here, but for me it was a great introduction to many topics uh, as well as the things I've discussed, the, the artwork and the medical history. He also goes into some other specific areas within the medieval world, uh, just having one particular body part as the source of his musings. For instance, he talks about, um, when he talks about senses, he talks about hearing and how the loudest human made noise a person in this time period would hear would be church bells. So it goes on to talk about church bells and different ways of making them, stuff like that. So there is there is a broader discussion than just the body, but it's always anchored in the body as a starting point. And he also says that in the, in the beginning of the book, he says that he wants to shed light on other parts of medieval times that are kind of neglected in popular popularized accounts of the time because it wasn't all dark and gritty and muddy and uh, I mean dark <laughs> really. Uh, there were other things uh, in this period worth talking about and I think this was a very good introduction to that. The only thing I will say is that it's been a while since I read a book that used this many words I didn't know. I mean when I started reading English books, sure, there were always a lot of words I didn't know, but this one just had a lot of big fancy words that I had never heard before. A lot of them Latin terms. So some of them I looked up, some of them I ignored, some of them I just assumed I understood from the context. But yeah, overall, this was a really good read, so I'm happy I found this in London earlier this year. Also, it's probably the most beautiful book I've bought and read this year. Not that that should really mean anything, but it does. The second book I want to talk about is uh, Faces in the Water by Janet Frame, which is a novel from New Zealand. And it tells the story about Istina Mavet, who spends, I think, about eight years of her life in 
various wards at mental institutions. And I think this is a hard book to talk about because it was a hard book to read for two reasons mainly. For one thing it's fairly depressing because she paints the pictures of these institutions that are harrowing. Uh, it, they are not nice places to be. They are not necessarily focused on treatment of the patients as much as they are a place to store these people that needs to be away from the general society. Uh, the nurses have at times a cruel uh, a cruel way of handling the patients um, rather than actually nursing them or helping them. Um, the doctors are overworked and don't really have time for the patients at all. And you follow Istina and she is clearly suffering from severe anxiety. She's scared of a lot of things and that really doesn't get any better by being in these institutions because there are things in there that scares her, her as well and electroshock therapy being like the worst of the worst for her she really is she is really scared of getting treatment and she continuously does get sent to electroshock therapy uh, because of this fear um, so it's a hard read because it's depressing, because you really feel for these people and because Istina Mavet is the person telling the story, she comes out of this looking like she doesn't belong there at all. Because you read about the other characters, the other patients that she's observing and they seem to be way more ill than she is. Uh, some of them can't speak, some of them has to be restrained at all times, uh, some of them believe they are like God or a queen or whatever, they have severe del delusions uh, and she comes off as being very normal. But then there are hints uh, that she might not always be reliable as a narrator because there must be a reason why she is continuously moved towards where the patients are sicker uh, than where she used to be. Um, so there are probably incidents here that we don't hear about, even though we hear about some of them, we get some hints that she's not always as well behaved as it might look at all times. Uh, but yeah, th that's the one thing that made this hard to read. Uh, I could only read like a portion at a time because it is depressing uh, and I needed time to let it sink in uh, before I was ready for a new portion of that. And the other thing is that I find it hard to read novels where the main character lacks agency and that is certainly the case for this book because Istina Mavet decides absolutely nothing of her own life. Uh, somebody else decides when she gets out of bed, when she eats, what she eats, what she wears, when she goes to bed, when she's allowed to take a shower or go to the toilet. I mean she has absolutely no choices of her, her own life and her own like everyday life here. Uh, and that makes for a story where there's nothing much that propels the action forward. It's just a lot of things, a stream of things happening to the main character. Uh, and yeah, that makes it an easy book to put down and you don't really have that urge to pick it back up. But on the other hand, the writing and the language in this was beautiful and the descriptions of all of the characters, all of the other patients she comes in contact with uh, is respectful and beautiful and I felt I really got to know them. So overall I'm very happy to have read this book and uh, I, I did, I liked the book but I didn't necessarily enjoy the book if that makes sense. Then I also read a book from Australia this past week which is called The Spare Room by Helen Garner which is the story about two women in their, I'm not sure if they were 50s or the 60s, uh, they've been friends for a long time and now one of them is terminal, terminally 
ill with cancer and she has signed up for some alternative treatment because regular medicine has given her up and uh, she comes to stay with her friend for three weeks while this treatment lasts in Melbourne and we hear about their relationship, we hear uh, flashbacks to earlier times in their relationship and we hear about how this patient uh, patient nurse sort of relationship affects their friendship and how hard it is for the one of them who is healthy to come to terms with both her friend being terminally ill but also that her friend ignores this fact and refuses to believe it and instead uh, goes into this treatment which is a fraud really and the, the 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 friend who owns the house who lives there the, the healthy friend the nursing friend knows that this is a fraud and so it's a lot of conflict about that i found the story of these two women to be interesting i liked reading about their relationship i wasn't overly happy with the writing itself in this book there was a bit too heavy on the adjectives for my taste so overall i thought it was okay but it's not a new favorite of mine an author i have read for the first time this week though that will definitely be a potential new favorite was octavia e butler uh, i read uh, blood child which is a short story collection and this is the second edition of that which includes the five stories that were originally the collection in addition to two extra essays and two new stories as well and i really really love this these are sci-fi stories mostly uh, one or two might be more realistic stories uh, but they were very inventive, very well written, and they kept me sort of at the edge uh, of my seat because I was always wondering what is happening, what does all these things mean, and they all were wrapped up nicely and uh, yeah, I was planning to spend some time with this reading like a story a week or something, but instead I ended up eating it whole in one day or two days. Uh, and. Um, I, I really, really like the writing and uh, I'm definitely going to be looking into some of uh, Butler's novels next, because this was great. You might have seen three weeks ago I made a video about the books I was currently reading and I was sort of wondering if I was going to spiral and start all of the books and be reading like 10 or 12 books at a time, because that's something I tend to do when I'm quite busy. Uh, this time I didn't do that, so I finished four of the books in that uh, in that video. I started three more since then and I finished two of those as well, which means that my currently reading pile at the moment is three books, which is sort of the perfect amount in my opinion. I have one fiction, one non-fiction and one audiobook on the go, and that like that that is the perfect blend for me. Um, I'm probably gonna mess that up pretty soon and start something else but we'll see. Uh, so I am still currently reading A Ripple from the Storm by Doris Lessing. I have 50 pages left of this still so I'm gonna finish it this coming week. Uh, this is the third book in the Martha Quest uh, series. Uh, no, the Children of Violence series is what it, it's called. Martha Quest is the main character. So in the first book Martha, we follow Martha Quest as a teenager moving out from her home and establishing herself as an independent woman in a city. And in the second book we follow her marriage and her, her becoming a mother. And in this third book we follow her political awakening where she joins a communist group and we follow her to lots and lots and lots of meetings and having discussions with a lot of people. So this is another one where I need to take my time because it is pretty dense, uh, which is something I can say for most of Lessing's novel. I think I always need to take my time with them and digest what I'm reading. Uh, I'm reading them in, in chunks that I can sort of mull over a time before I'm ready to move on. Um, this has, as I said, a lot of political discussion in it. It's almost essayistic at times. 
um, but I like it. I really like reading about these early communist groups from a time before they were aware of everything happening in the actual communist countries. Uh, because there's this feeling of intellectual discussion that appeals to me. Uh, so I, I like reading about it, uh, even if it gets somewhat dense at times. And I also like that this is written from hindsight, from Blessing. It was published in the early 60s, uh, where she knew a lot more than Martha does at the events taking place in this book. Uh, this is during the, first, uh, the Second World War. Uh, in southern Rhodesia and uh, and there are these sort of hints from the author telling the story where she kind of mocks the idealism of these young people uh, which I mean Lessing herself was part of groups like this so she knows what she talks about and she, she looks at it in hindsight um, and I think that's entertaining to look at her her kind of pokes at her younger self as well even though this is not autobiographical but Martha Quest uh, has a lot in common with Lessing there are a lot of events uh, in Martha Quest's life that mirrors that of Lessing's own so I do find reading these books really interesting and as I said I'm probably I am most definitely going to finish this in the coming week maybe even today I'm not sure how much reading time I'll get for the rest of the day. And then the other one from that video that I am still currently reading is The Horse, the Wheel and Language by David W. Anthony. Uh, I haven't really gotten much further than I was at that time three weeks ago, maybe 20 pages on. I really haven't made this a priority uh, for these three weeks because I've been trying to finish off some of the others. and. Uh, I've been trying to read this in bed and that just doesn't work out because at the moment I'm at a fairly dense part so I read like three pages and then I fall asleep so I think I'm gonna have to start moving this to my daytime reading uh, pile uh, to get uh, further in it but I do think it's interesting I mean I really like the first part of it where you got into the linguistic part now it's more archaeology and it's very detailed and pretty repetitive because he's going from dig to dig to dig to just tell us what was found. But, but between those parts there are still some more overarching parts where he summarizes things more. And those parts I find really interesting so I will be making this a priority uh, and I want to finish it. So that's going to be a project, but it's con probably going to be a project that takes place over a lot of the summer. I'm not going to finish this next week. And also, my current audiobook is Grey Sister by Mark Lawrence, which is the second book in the trilogy called Books of the Ancestor. Uh, I read Red Sister, uh, finished it sometime last week, went straight on to Grey Sister and I have about two hours left of that audiobook so I'll probably finish it on my commute tomorrow and then I'll go straight into the third book in the series called Holy Sister because that's how I like to read my series, binging them from beginning to end whenever possible. So I'll probably talk about that series more when I've finished the third and final book. So that was all for now for me. That's my first reading week wrap up. We'll see how I'll do with these in the future, but my plan is to post one of these each weekend for the coming weeks. So I hope you like this format and I would love to hear about what you've been reading this past week. Uh, if you want to share that with me in the comment section and until next time, bye bye.